Good day everyone, I'm Norman Wahlberger. Welcome to this lecture on a new way of thinking about arithmetic by using the idea of a multiset, this foundational data structure concept uh, to build up uh, the entire theory, including algebra, in a systematic or uh, step-by-step fashion from really uh, the, the most essential uh, simple kind of object perhaps that we can imagine, which is an empty set or an empty multiset. So what we're doing here is um, trying to expand our point of view from the set theoretical um, orientation that 20th century mathematics largely had, which was of course built up from the need of analysts to have a foundation for their understanding of analysis on the continuum. So Dedekind's theory of real numbers required uh, Cantor's theory of infinite sets, and so so the the need for infinite sets became important, and then um, this uh, 20th century uh, axiomatic approach to set theory uh, was the sort of philosophical substitute for a proper foundation, and since then, uh, more and more. Um, mathematicians have leaned on sets as sort of foundational objects in mathematics and have tried to frame everything, or largely everything, in terms of sets. Now sets are well and good, but they're really only one of several possible data structures that are available to us, and in particular, uh, multi-sets are a very important alternative, and they allow us to see a lot of different things in, in very different light. Okay. So today we're going to see a really good example of that because we're going to move towards exponentiation. This is the third of our operations in this world of multi-sets. And it's quite different from the exponentiation that you're familiar with, so be prepared for some, some serious novelty. And we're going to have to go slowly and carefully. I'm going to exhibit lots of examples so you can see how this actually works. And at the end of the video, you'll see that there's actually some really remarkable properties that this thing has. So it really is deserving of our study and our attention. So the basic framework is that we've set up this, this idea of uh, inductive or recursive building up of ever more complicated objects, starting with zero, which is just the empty M set. And then M sets of zero are called natural numbers. M sets of natural numbers are called polynumbers. M sets of polynumbers are called multinumbers. And of course, we could carry on like this. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce some parallel things. Uh, first of all, some, uh, some counting functions that allow us to roughly assign sizes to some of these multi-sets that we're looking at. So we're going to introduce uh, Z, N, P, and M, obviously paralleling these uh, different types. And so these are going to be um, counting functions, with N being the one that's most familiar, counting the number of objects in, in, a, in a set or a collection. And uh, then we're going to look at this, uh, this hierarchy of operations that is potentially available to us, starting with addition and then multiplication, and moving crucially today to exponentiation. And throughout, I want you to have this idea that, you know, we're, we're looking in this direction, and we can sort of see that the steps that we're taking can be extended in a very obvious and natural way. Right? So at all of these points, I want you to be thinking, well, I wonder what happens if we go one step further or, or two steps further or something like this, right? Things get richer, they get more complicated, we get a bigger picture. So there's a lot of thinking to be done in trying to like move in this direction in this interesting, somewhat new world of mathematics. Now before I go on, it's the beginning of New Year 2023, so Happy New Year to everyone. And a special uh, thanks to my Patreon supporters and to members of my Wild Egg Mathematics Courses YouTube channel. Okay, so um, you guys are great. Uh, thanks so much for your support, uh, it's really appreciated. Alright, so this video will be very much building on Math Foundations 227 and 228, the two previous ones, so please make sure you watch them. But a very quick review, so we have these different types. Zero is just the empty M set denoted with brackets like this, or with the symbol zero. So that's what zero is in our world. Natural numbers are M sets of zeros, for example, that's an M set of zeros. And the simplest one is the M set just consisting of zero. That's going to be called one. This one here is called four. So this is the, where the usual sort of primary school natural number arithmetic takes place. Then one step up, uh, 
m sets of natural numbers are called poly numbers. The simplest one is alpha zero. The simplest one, which is not already a natural number in zero, is alpha zero, which is the m set consisting of one. Here's a typical poly number, which can then be interpreted in the form two plus alpha zero plus alpha zero cubed. Then to the next stage, multi numbers are m sets of poly numbers. So for example, this thing here, okay, that's a poly number, that's a poly number, that's a poly number, so that's an m set of poly numbers. And then when we introduce this new notation alpha 1 for the m set containing alpha 0, alpha 2 for the m set containing alpha 0 squared, alpha 3 containing alpha 0 cubed, then we can write something like this as a, um, a multinomial, if you like, uh, involving several variables, in this case alpha 0, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 4. And in principle we could have more and more variables. Okay, then addition is um, the sort of fundamental object. If you have an M set here, another M set here, the way you add them is you just dump the contents out into, a, um, into a, another box. Okay, so this M set 0, 1, this number 3, this M set 2 get in, moved in the other box, and the two elements here, 1 and 4, get moved in the box. Okay, multiplication, a little bit more sophisticated. Uh, the way you multiply two M sets is that you uh, add the elements of this M set with the elements of this set in all possible ways and form a multiset of all those possible sums. So this one here has two elements, multiset 06 and number 1. This one also two elements, number 4 and multiset 2. When we multiply them, we have to take the sum of this and this, which is this M set, sum of this and this, which is this one, sum of this and this, which is this, and sum of this and this, which is this. Make sure that you understand uh, those examples. Okay, so that's a very quick overview, and now we want to go further. So we've informally used the word element of an M set. Let me be a little bit more careful about that and also introduce some important notation. So here's an example of an M set. It consists of a 0, 0, a 1, and another M set containing 2 and 3. So we'll say that the elements of this M set A are 0, 0, 1, and 2, 3. Now this is a big box, and inside it it has other boxes. And those other boxes very well may have other stuff inside them, okay? But the boxes that you can see are the elements of the bigger box, including their contents. So we then write to denote this element relation. Zero is an element of A, one is an element of A, and this multiset two, three is an element of A. So these are all true, uh, separate true statements. And if X is a general M set, then we're going to introduce this kind of notation to allow us to describe the elements. So the brackets means M set, okay? And here is sort of the object that we're considering, or the objects that we're considering. And the colon here represents some condition, and the condition is that little x belongs to capital X. In other words, is an element of capital X in this sense here. So what we're saying here, this is just a way of thinking about X. It's the multiset consisting of all X, where x is an element of x. So in this case, we would have to run through all of these, 0, 0, 1, and 2, 3, as we are running through the elements of x. In other words, we have to um, respect the natural multiplicities that are occurring here throughout. Okay, So it's very different from set theory in that way. If there's two zeros here. We have to keep those two zeros separate. We have to keep track of them. There's two of them there. So let me illustrate the usefulness of this notation by starting again with this M set A, and here are some other M sets defined in terms of the elements of A. So B is the M set of things in the form A plus 1, where A is in capital A. So we have to take each one of these elements and we have to add 1 to them. So 0 plus 1 is 1, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, and if we add 1 to this, well remember 1 is the M set consisting of 0. So when we add those two M sets, we get the M set 0, 2, 3. Here's um, M set C, which is the set of 2 times A, where A is an element of A. So we have to multiply each of these things by 2. Okay, So 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times this thing is this M set right here. Here is a more complicated thing where we're taking two M sets, say this A and this B, and we're actually taking their product, A, B, or we could possibly more precisely, say A times B, all right? We will sometimes use this, but actually this is probably preferred. Okay, and so what is the definition of that? Well, in terms of this notation, it's the set of A plus B, such that A 
belongs to capital A and B belongs to capital B. So what we have to do is we have to go through these two sets here and take sums of things. So the zero and the one is one, the zero and the one is one, the zero and the two is two, and the zero and plus this is, is itself. And then when we repeat it with this one, we get the same thing. And then when we add one, we're gonna get uh, two, two, three, and this thing. When we add uh, two, three to everything, we get two, three plus one is, uh, is that one, two, three plus one is that one, two, three plus two is, uh, is, is this one here because two is the M set consisting of two zeros. And finally, when we add uh, this one and this one, we get uh, this one here. Okay, so uh, it's convenient uh, kind of notation for us. All right, so now let's introduce these counting functions, which tell us how big M sets are. And there's different levels of counting functions, sort of more sophisticated ones as we go on. So. We're working always with pure M sets. I remind you that's the framework where we start with the empty M sets and we only create M sets by using empty M sets and containments of, of boxes in boxes, okay? So there are no other external um, mathematical objects at this stage. We just have empty boxes and we put those empty boxes inside other boxes to form sort of nested collections of boxes. So there's no, nothing else. Okay, so the first function, very simple, is that if A is a pure M set, we define Z of A to be zero, the empty M set. So every M set, when you apply the Z counting function to it, you always get zero. That's pretty simple. So N, so N is defined this way. If A is a pure M set, then capital N of A is the M set consisting of things of the form of Z of A as A runs through A. So for each element of capital A, we take Z of that. In other words, we're essentially replacing it with zero. So we're looking inside A, oh, there's all these boxes. We're replacing each of those boxes and all their contents with a single zero. Single zero, single zero, single zero. The result then is naturally a natural number because we're getting an M set of zeros. So for example, if A is this M set here, then Z of A, of course, is zero. And N of A, well, we have to apply Z to each of the elements. So Z of zero, Z of zero, Z of one, and Z of the M set two, three. Well, each of these is zero, so we get zero, 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 zero. And we recognize that's the natural number four. So this is how we're counting in sort of the naive, basic fashion. The N function is doing that basically replacing elements with zeros. It might be worthwhile to, to point out that this is in some sense like a, a, almost a prehistoric kind of uh, simple kind of thing. It's analogous to um, some kids 100,000 years ago seeing some animals at a water hole and they want to convey how many animals there are and so they're going to go, there's an animal, there's an animal, there's an animal, there's an animal, there's that many animals. So they, they walk home and they say, oh look, that's how many animals there are at the water hole. So you don't really need a prior language of numbers, you just need some physical representation, some simpler representation of the, the complicated set out there. Sort of what we're doing here, the, the fingers are being represented just by these zeros. Okay, these zeros here are just representing these more complicated objects. Okay, but now let's go to one level higher and define the P counting function. So P of an M set A is the M set of N of A, where A is in capital A. So each of the elements of A, we apply N to it, getting therefore a natural number. And then we put all those natural numbers in an M set. So obviously what we're getting here is a poly number, so necessarily by definition. So what we're doing now is we're assigning a more sophisticated um, sort of object to, uh, to this thing that we're counting. That might be roughly analogous to a more sophisticated uh, child who goes and sees the five animals at the water hole and says, aha, but there are actually three antelope. Well, he doesn't say three. He says, there are this many antelope, 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 and there are this many lions, lion, lion. Okay, and he walks home like this and says, look, this is what's at the water hole antelopes, lions, okay? That's more information, that's more detailed information than just saying that there's this many animals. That's sort of what we're doing. Okay, and then next level, 
the multi-set analog, m of a, it's the m set of p of little a's, where a is in capital A. Okay, let's do an example. So here is an m set b. Okay, so there's an m set, there's an m set, there's an m set. Okay, um, so z of b, well z of b is always zero. n of b, we have to replace the elements with zero. So this element is replaced with zero. This element is replaced with zero. This element is replaced with zero. We get zero, 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 which is the number three. So n of b is three. What is p of b? Well, we have to take n of this. We have to take n of this. We have to take n of this. And we have to form an m set of those. All right, so what is n of this? Well, that means we have to count what's inside here. So what does that mean? It means that we have to look inside this m set and apply z to each of the elements. So we have to apply z to 2, and we have to apply z to 4. We're going to get 0, 0. So n of this thing is the m set 0, 0, which is the number 2. Here we're going to get the m set 0, 0, 0, which is the number 3. Here we're going to get the m set 0, 0, which is the number 2. So this thing, it's a poly number, it's an M set of natural numbers, is the P of B, this M set B. It's um, a sort of more refined information, right? Uh, the N of B is telling you, okay, this thing has three things in it. That's what that's telling you. This thing here is telling you more. You can still see that there's three things in it, but you can tell more about what those three things are, but still not enough information to recover them. Okay, what about M of B? Well, so now what we have to do is we have to take the elements of B and we have to apply P to each one of them. So we have to take P of this thing, we have to take P of this M set, we have to take P of this M set and form an M set of them. Okay, so what is P of, uh, of this one here? Okay, how do we do that? P of this is going to be N of each one of these. Okay, um, so what, what's N of 2? That's a good question. What is n of 2? So what is 2? Well, 2 is the m set consisting of 0, 0. So you, if you replace each one of those zeros with 0, you're going to get the same m set. You're going to get 2 back again. So n of 2 is 2. In fact, n of any natural number is itself. Okay, so that, what, that's what n of 2 is. What is n of this thing? Well, um, this is a, an m set that only has one thing in it. So its size is 1. Okay, so P of this thing is the M set to 1. P of this thing is going to be 0, 1, 1. The same thing as itself because these guys are all natural numbers and an N of them are each themselves. What is P of this? Well, we have to apply N to each of these. So what's N of this? Well, uh, it's 1. What's N of this? It's 1. And so... P of this thing is M set 1, 1, and M of the entire thing is, is this thing here. So, again, this is a like, little bit more detailed information than P of B, right? This is telling you more. It's still sort of like this. I mean, you can see that there's two things here, and there's, there's three things here, and there's two things here. So you can recover that. But it's telling you a little bit more about the structure. But still not enough information to actually recover the, the B. Of course, if we went one step further, then maybe things would be different. You might like to think about that. Okay, so we have this natural hierarchy of counting functions now that allows us to you know, talk about the, the sizes of M sets in some fashion, but in a, in a rather flexible fashion, we can talk about sizes at, at different levels. Okay, so now we want to talk about operations because we want to move towards the exponentiation operation. So addition, we've already talked about if A and B are M sets, here's the definition, here is a possible definition of what their sum is. So A plus B, it's the M set of A's and B's where A is an A and B is in B. So we just form this M set. For each element of A, we have to put it in there. For each element of B, we have to put it in there. We just form a big M set. Okay, so maybe this is a kind of a strange notation, but I think it's at least uh, somewhat indicative of what we're doing. But of course, uh, we know what that is, right? We just 
taking the two boxes and dumping them out into, a, into another box, and that's the addition. And here's an example, there's an M set, there's an M set, here's the, the sum in the obvious fashion. Multiplication, now we can also express that as we've already seen in terms of our notation, okay? So A times B is the set or the M set of A plus B, such that little a is in capital A and little b is in capital B. So we have to go through all possible pairings of elements in A and elements in B, and we have to add them. Okay, that M set that we get is the product of the M sets. And here's an example, so there's an M set, has a, oh, that's one element there, one element there, one element there, one element there, okay? So there should be altogether four elements in their product. Uh, there's one element, I guess, there's another, there's another, there's another. So you can check that I, I've done it correct. All right, so here's the definition of the exponentiation operation. And I, I warn you again, okay, that you're going to have to maybe make a separate uh, compartment in your mind for this, because this is not exactly the same as the exponentiation that you're familiar with. Although we're still going to use the same notation, the kind of familiar wedge. Okay, so we have two M sets A and B, and we define A wedge B, the exponentiation of A and B. And it's the obvious thing, okay? It is the M set consisting of all A times B's, where little a belongs to capital A and little b belongs to capital B. So we look at all possible pairs of elements in A and elements in B, and this time we multiply them. To define multiplication, we added them. To define exponentiation, we're going to multiply them. See, in, in some sense, this is like, you know, so blindingly obvious, isn't it? I mean, it's like, what else could you do? What else could you do? Okay, so what actually happens? So here's an example. So let's say this thing is A, here's an M set, here's another M set, let's call it B. We want to exponentiate them. Instead of multiply them, we're going to exponentiate them. Okay, so what do we have to do? Well, we have to take pairs of elements. So this element, one, M set 1, 2, we're going to have to multiply it by 0. We're also going to have to multiply it by this M set. We're going to have to take this element and this element and multiply them. We have to take this and this and multiply them. Okay, what did we get? So anything times zero is zero. That's easy to check. To multiply these two M sets, we have to again form all possible pairs and this time add them. One plus zero is one. One plus three is four. Two plus zero is two and two plus three is five. So we're going to get the M set one, four, two, five. Four times zero is zero. Four times this, well, you can work it out. Uh, you're just going to get these things here uh, repeated four times. So you're going to get 0, 0, 0, 0, 3, 3, 3, 3. Okay, so those are the various possible products. And um, there's four of them. And the M set formed by them is the wedge of A and B, or the, it's the exponentiation of A and B. Let's have a, a note in this case here that um, with respect to the counting functions, okay, so if we looked at z of a and z of b and took their wedge, well, the z of anything is zero, so zero wedge zero is zero, and, and please convince yourself that that's zero. That's certainly z of a wedge b. So, so trivially, this uh, exponentiation satisfies uh, compatibility, say, with z. What about compatibility with n? So what's n of a? Uh, this thing here has two elements. And uh, n of b, uh, this thing here has also two elements. Uh, so 2 wedge 2, okay, well, what is 2 wedge 2? So this is the m set 0, 0, and this one's the m set 0, 0. So we have to form all possible pairs and, and multiply them. But 0 times 0 is 0, so we're going to get four zeros. So we're going to get 0, 0, 0, 0, which is 4. In other words, we're getting the same as the product. So actually when it comes to numbers, exponentiation of numbers is the same as multiplication of numbers. Okay, so maybe you object to that, but that's just bear with me. Okay, that's, that's the way it is, all right? So that's four, and what about n of a wedge b? Well, here's a wedge b, and it has one, two, three, four elements. So yes, indeed, uh, n of a wedge n of b is equal to n of a wedge b. What about p of a wedge p of b? Uh, we can practice our, our counting. So um, what's p of this thing here? Well, we have to uh, count how many n of this and n of this. n of this is 2, n of this is 4. n of this, 
what's n of zero? It's zero. What's n of this? It's two. There's two things in here. Okay, now when we exponentiate these two m sets, we have to form all possible products. So two times zero is zero. Two times two is four. Four times zero is zero. Four times two is eight. So we're getting the m set zero, four, zero, eight. And what about uh, a wedge b here? It is here. What is p of that? n of this is zero. n of this is zero. n of this is four. n of this is eight. So in this case, at least, we see that p of a wedge p of b is equal to p of a wedge b. What about m of a wedge m of b? Well, these guys are all multi-numbers, both of them, okay? Because they're m sets of polynumbers. And it's not too hard to see that if you have a multi-number and you apply m to it, you're going to get itself. So m of a is equal to a, and m of b equals b. And if you take a wedge b, which is this thing here, that's also a multi-number. So m of it is also a wedge b. So yes, indeed, this also uh, is satisfied for m. So we have a kind of a compatibility between exponentiation and the operation z, n, p, and m, at least in this case. So you might like to think about whether this is just a happy accident or whether it happens more generally. So I want to look at a slightly more complicated example where one of the m sets at least is below a, a multi-number, okay? So this one here, A, is an m set consisting of two m sets and this m set here consists of a number and another m set. So we have a sort of a, you know, three levels uh, of, of, of nesting before we get to the numbers. So this is not a, a multi-number. This is a multi-number over here, because that's, these guys are both polynumbers. But these guys here are not polynumbers. This one here itself is a multi-number, so it's one step further. So let's have a look at what A wedge B is in this case. So still we have to take a uh, product, so we have to take this element times 2, and this element times mem set 1, 3. And we have to take this 3 times 2, and this 3 times 1, 3. Okay, what happens when we do this? So when we multiply anything by 2, basically we're just sort of doubling all the entries. So we're going to get 1, 1, m set 2, m set 2. So when we do this product here, we have to form all possible combinations and form sums. So 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 3 is 4. This m set 2 plus 1 is m set 2, 0. And m set 2 plus 3 is m set 2, 0, 0, 0. Because remember, 3 is just m set 0, 0, 0. Okay, this uh, m set 3 times 2 is m set 3, 3. And this one here, we have to add them, we get a 4, 6. So there's the exponentiation of a and b. And now, I'm just making a little check here so you can see if I've done it right. I claim that n of a, well, clearly z of a wedge z of b is z of a wedge b. That's happening all the time. But here n of a is uh, 2, okay? And n of b is 2, and their, their wedge, as we've seen, is 4. And that is indeed the uh, number of elements in a wedge b. And p of a wedge p of b, well, there's my calculation. And you can convince yourself that's p of a wedge b. And I've also done m of a wedge m of b now. So what is m of this thing here? So m of this thing is we have to apply p to each of the elements here. Okay, so this is um, p of this. How do, how do we apply, what do we do there to form uh, p of that? Um, well, we have to take n of each one of these. So n of 1 is 1, and n of this thing is, is 1. And similarly, what is, what is p of this thing? Well, p of this thing is n of what's inside. So n of 3 is 3, so we're getting the m set 3. And uh, this thing is a multinumber, so m of it is itself. And then done the multiplication, and we can convince ourselves that we're getting m of a wedge b again. So it seems we got a little bit more evidence that uh, this exponentiation operation is behaving nicely with respect to these basic counting functions. So here are some other additional properties of the exponentiation operation that are worthwhile you know, just being explicit about. 
Um, and it's, it's important to note the difference between this one and the usual exponentiation operation. And let me remind you that this is happening much more broadly, right? We're, we're exponentiating multi-numbers by multi-numbers. We're, we're in principle, we're exponentiating you know, huge uh, towers of, of nested M sets with huge towers of nested M sets. Okay, it's all completely done in a recursive fashion. So actually making a computation like this is something that your computer is likely going to be very good at, but maybe for us it's a little bit challenging. But hey, it's good to have um, a mathematics which our computers can do really easily and well. Okay, so the basic property is, well, the thing is commutative. Okay, and why is it commutative? Well, it's because the exponentiation is defined in terms of the multiplication, and the multiplication is commutative. And ultimately, why is multiplication commutative? It's because it's defined in terms of addition, and addition is commutative. And similarly, this thing is associative. If you have three of them and you, you exponentiate them like this, then it ultimately comes down to looking at expressions of the form little a times little b times little c. And we know that multiplication is associative. It doesn't matter how you bracket those things. And the reason for that is because, well, it comes just directly down to addition, because addition is associative. And it's ultimately because when you bump contents of boxes into other boxes, the order is unimportant. So this thing here has a well-defined uh, meaning. So we just well write A wedge B wedge C is the M set of things in form A times B times C, where little A is in A, little B is in B, little C is in C. And then there's a distributive law. There's actually two of them, of course. The A plus B wedge C is A wedge C plus B wedge C. And let's just observe that the usual convention is that the, these higher operations have precedence. So when we see something like this, we have to do these uh, exponentiations before we do the addition. Right? So this means first do A wedge C, and B wedge C, and then add them. Uh, then there's some sort of identity type uh, properties. Um, zero wedge anything is, is zero. It's easy to see. And it's a kind of a counting thing that if you wedge something with one, you're going to get n of a. So if a is some m set and you're wedging it with one, you're taking the exponentiation with one. So one is m set zero. So what you have to do is you have to, you have to multiply zero by each one of the elements of A, zero times this element, zero times this element, etc. So what you end up doing is you're just replacing all the elements with zero. And the M set that you're getting then is just N of A. It's just, you're just essentially counting the number of elements in A. So that's an important kind of way of thinking about the exponentiation, right? It's, it's performing an important function that exponentiating with one is just basically counting counting at the n level. And then if we go up one, right, so we go to poly numbers, this thing here, m set one, which is alpha zero or alpha sub zero, that is going to have the property that's going to be playing the role of the identity. If we wedge that with any a in either order, we're going to get a. Why is that? Well, because you know, here's an m set a, it has various elements, and we're, we're wedging it with m set 1. So what does that mean we have to do? Well, we have to form all possible pairs between this 1 and these other guys, and we have to multiply them. So we have to do 1 times this, 1 times this, 1 times this, etc. Well, the 1 is acting as the identity in the, in the, in the multiplication level, okay? Um, and so this m set 1 is going to act as the identity at the exponentiation level. See, and it's, it's kind of beautiful. You can kind of sort of see that these patterns are just going to keep on extending, right? This is, this is big arithmetic. Okay, so we are going to talk more about exponentiation because, in fact, it has a, a very important consequence in terms of rethinking our sort of uh, our framework for multinumbers. Okay, but what I want to do before that is connect directly with computer science. So probably a lot of you will have figured this out already by now that this discussion of M sets nested in, in each other, it's really um, very close to uh, a discussion of trees, actually sort of roofed trees or rooted trees in, in computer science. And so I want to talk about that and I want to, to show you that in fact in some sense this arithmetic has probably been under the noses of the computer scientists for a long time. 
In fact, I wouldn't at all be surprised if some computer scientist somewhere or other had, had already developed this kind of thing. In fact, it's, it would be a little bit of a surprise if that wasn't the case, to be honest. But in any case, I think it'll be quite interesting because it'll give us a, another kind of way of visualizing what this arithmetic looks like. Hope you'll join me for that. I'm Norman Wahlberger. Thanks for listening and Happy New Year. Thank you.